In this video, we're going to talk about how we can determine whether or not a molecule is either polar or nonpolar, which impacts things such as solubility, boiling point, and a whole slew of other things like surface tension, viscosity, and, and whatnot. But we learned about five basic molecular geometries, including uh, trigonal planar, linear, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, and bent. Okay? So trigonal planar shapes have three atoms around the central atom, and they can either be symmetrical, like we see here with BF3, or they can be asymmetrical, like we have here with formaldehyde, CH2O. So each element has its own electronegativity, or strength an atom has when attracting electrons in a bond. And oxygen has a value of 3.5, which is higher than carbon, which is 2.5, or hydrogen, which is 2.1. And as a result, the oxygen is going to pull the electron density much closer to it, and that's going to make the rest of the molecule somewhat electron deficient, which will result in it being partially positive. Okay, so our bond dipoles, which show the difference in strength between the two atoms in a bond, point towards the carbon from the hydrogen, but then from the carbon to the oxygen. So therefore, we have a partially negative oxygen end and a partial positive rest of the molecule. Now, if we look at BF3, fluorine, kind of help itself, it's so attractive, but it has an electronegativity of 4.0, which is much higher than borons, which is 2.0. So the electrons are being pulled away from the boron, making it pretty electron deficient. It's gonna be partially positive, but it's kind of like everything's pulling equally in opposite directions. So they really kind of cancel each other out. And while the fluorines are all partially negative, there's no positive or negative end of this molecule. It's not lopsided. So trigonal pyramidal can either be polar or nonpolar depending on what's bonded to the central atom. If you have different elements bonded to the central atom, or multiple elements bonded to the central atom, it can be polar. But if you have identical elements bonded to the central atom, then it's going to be nonpolar. So symmetrical, nonpolar, asymmetrical, polar. Linear, we see the same deal. In this first molecule, HCN, carbon's more electronegative than hydrogen, but nitrogen's more electronegative than carbon. So the electrons get pulled to the nitrogen end of the molecule, leaving that end partially negative and the hydrogen end of the molecule partially positive. However, if we look at CO2, carbon dioxide, which is a gas at room temperature because it's nonpolar, you have poles towards the oxygen, but they're going equally in opposite directions. So that even though there's partially char partial charges on each of the atoms, there's no positive or negative end of the molecule. So we'd call that nonpolar. So linear can either be polar, if it's got multiple elements bonded to the central atom, or nonpolar if the two elements bonded to the central atom are the same. Tetrahedral, you can be nonpolar if you have identical atoms for the same reason as over here. And it can be polar if you have multiple elements bonded to the central atom. In this case, fluorine is much stronger than carbon or hydrogen. So the electrons all get drawn up towards the fluorine, which becomes partially negative, and the back end of the molecule becomes partially positive. Now, the next two molecular geometries have unshared pairs on the central atom, and that's going to lead to some built-in asymmetry, and it's going to result in the molecules pretty much always being polar. You have the rare exception where the atoms bonded are exactly identical in electronegativity, and then you could say that's nonpolar, but generally speaking, those unshared pairs give it a, some built-in asymmetry. So it can either be, you know, if you have the central atom being more electronegative than the surrounding elements, then it's going to draw the electrons up to it and it's going to be partially negative or if it goes out it's going to be partially positive on the central atom and partially negative at the more electronegative element and the same deal with bent molecules so the electrons can either be like in water the poster child for polar molecules the electrons are drawn towards the oxygen and therefore that oxygen becomes partially negative and your hydrogens will be partially positive and so Again, the molecules where you have no um, unshared pairs of electrons in the central atom can be polar or nonpolar, depending on the symmetry of the rest of it. But if you have unshared pairs in the central atom, like you do in trigonal pyramidal or bent, it's pretty much always going to be polar.